Hello and welcome. In this series of lessons, I will teach you all about subject verb agreement. We'll start with the basics in this lesson, and in the following lessons, we'll discuss more advanced topics such as quantity expressions, group or collective nouns, identifying subjects when there are interrupting phrases or clauses, etc. This first lesson will teach you how to make sentences with correct verb forms for different subjects and how to use the verb be, that is, am, is, are, was, and were. As always, at the end of the lesson, there is a final quiz to test your understanding. So if you're ready, let's get started. So what is subject verb agreement? Well, you know that every English sentence has a subject and a verb. Subject verb agreement means the subject and the verb must be in the correct form. This is the rule. A singular subject takes a singular verb. A plural subject takes a plural verb. Take these two sentences. That monkey eats bananas. Those monkeys eat bananas. In the first sentence, we see a singular noun as the subject, monkey. Noun means a name, so here monkey is the name of an animal. This is the subject here. The verb is eats. Verb means an action. In this sentence, the subject is a singular noun, one monkey, so the verb also needs to be singular, eats. But in the second sentence, we have a plural subject and a plural verb. Those monkeys eat bananas. Notice that the nouns and the verbs are behaving in opposite ways. The singular noun monkey becomes monkeys with an S in the plural form. But the verb has an S in the singular form, eats. And the plural verb, eat, does not have an S. Here are some more sentences. That boy walks to school. Those boys walk to school. This car goes fast. These cars go fast. Your shirt looks nice. Your shirts look nice. That lady speaks Spanish. Those ladies speak Spanish. My grandfather has a big house. My grandparents have a big house. So the singular nouns here are monkey, boy, car, shirt, lady, and grandfather. These are all nouns because they are names of people, animals, or objects. The singular verbs all have an S, eats, walks, goes, looks, speaks, and has. When we look at the plurals, this is reversed. The plural nouns all have an S at the end, and the plural verbs have no S. Now with plural nouns, I want to point out that there are some irregular plurals. For example, instead of saying that boy, you can say that child walks to school. But now the plural is those children walk to school, not childs. But still, children is a plural form, so we use a plural verb walk with no s added to the end. Here's one more example, but this one is going to be a little tricky. Mark lives in Florida. Mark is the name of one man, so we say lives. Singular verb, that's easy. But what if Mark has a wife, Anna? Would you say Mark and Anna lives in Florida? or live in Florida? Well, Mark is one person, so singular. Similarly, Anna is one person, again singular. However, Mark and Anna are two people, so this is a plural form. We need a plural verb. Remember that a plural verb does not take an S at the end. So Mark and Anna live in Florida. This type of subject connected by AND is called a compound subject. There is another type of compound subject connected by OR. Mark or Anna lives in Florida. Now notice that we have a singular verb, lives. This is because the conjunction OR means that either Mark or Anna, one of those two, is in Florida, not both of them. So only one person lives in Florida. So the subject is considered singular and the verb is also in singular form. This type of compound subject connected by OR is not that common, but it's still useful to keep this rule in mind. Alright, there are a lot of nouns in these sentences. 
But in natural speech and writing, we often use pronouns in the place of nouns to avoid repetition. For example, instead of that child, I can say, he walks to school. And instead of those children, they walk to school. In the place of that lady, I can say, she speaks Spanish. And for the plural, again, they speak Spanish. They here refers to those ladies. This car goes fast can be rewritten as it goes fast. And these cars becomes they go fast. Here are all the other sentences with the noun subject changed to a pronoun subject. There are two things I want to point out. Notice that in the first sentence, I've said he, she, or it. That's because you can refer to an animal, like a monkey, in the same way that you talk about a person. You can use he or she, or you can just say it. That's also correct. And second, we see that all of the plurals have been changed to they. But in some cases, you can also have we. For example, if you're talking to the Spanish-speaking ladies, they can say, we speak Spanish. Similarly, if you're in a conversation with Mark and Anna, Mark might say, we live in Florida. We meaning the couple of Mark and Anna. The children can say, we walk to school. And if monkeys could talk, they'd tell you, we eat bananas. Here's a table that shows you this pattern. The first row has singular nouns and the singular pronouns he, she, and it. So the verbs are all in singular form with an S added to the end. In the second row, we see plural nouns along with the two plural pronouns, we and they. So the verbs are all in plural form without the S. Now you might have noticed that there are two important pronouns missing here. The pronouns I and you. Well, let me ask you. Are I and you singular or plural? Or plural? Where would you put them? Now, the pronoun I is always singular. I'm always just one person. You is usually singular because we usually focus on one person when speaking. But it can also be plural if you're talking to more than one person. Like through this video, I am teaching all of you. So I is a singular pronoun and you can be singular or plural. However, the rule in English is that with both I and you, we always use a plural verb. Don't ask me why. There's no real reason for this. It's just the rule. For example, I read the newspaper every morning. You make very good coffee. You might say that as a compliment if you go to somebody's house and you really like the coffee they give you. Notice that I did not say I reads or you makes. With I and you, we use plural verbs without S. Let's get back to the full sentences. I've added our two new sentences with I and you at the bottom. The basic subject verb agreement rule, singular verb for singular subject and plural verb for plural subject also applies to negative forms. We say, that monkey does not eat bananas or doesn't eat bananas. Those monkeys do not or don't eat bananas. It's important to note that we say does not and then eat. We don't say does not eats because the S is already added to the helping verb do. So there's no need to add it again to the main verb eat. If you want, stop the video and read the other sentences. So remember that to make negative sentences, we use does not with singular subjects and do not with plural subjects. Similarly, to make questions, we use does singular and do plural. Does that monkey eat bananas? Do those monkeys eat bananas? Does that boy walk to school? Do those boys walk to school? Etc. You can pause and read the others if you want. Let's get back to the original sentences for a moment. I want to point out that subject verb agreement rules only apply to the present tense. In the past tense, subject verb agreement isn't a problem because there's only one past tense verb form. The past tense of eat is ate. So we say that monkey ate bananas. Those monkeys ate bananas. It's the same for both singular and plural subjects. Similarly, that boy walked to school, those boys walked to school. 
In the other sentences, we would say went, looked, spoke, had, lived, and made. So remember that the basic subject verb agreement rule only applies in the present tense. The rule is for a singular subject, you add S to the verb, and for a plural subject, you just use the verb in its base form without S. This rule works for all verbs. Walk, go, look, speak, ring, have, live, do, talk, play, etc., etc. Actually, this rule works for all verbs except for one, and that's the verb be. The verb be has its own subject verb agreement rules. Let's talk about them now. You know that verbs in English have two present tense forms eat, eats, walk, walks, and so on. And one past tense form, ate, walked, etc. But the verb be has three present tense forms, am, is, and are. It also has two past tense forms, was and were. In the present, if the subject is I, we say am. I am a teacher. I am going to eat. If the subject is a singular noun or one of these pronouns, he, she, or it, we use is. He is happy. Sarah is waiting. It is raining. And if the subject is a plural or one of these pronouns, you, we, or they, we use are. You are late. We are eating. The children are playing. In the past, the rules are different. For singular noun subjects and for the pronouns I, he, she, and it, we use was. I was tired. Arun was running. She was afraid. And for plural subjects and the pronouns you, we, and they, we use were. You were rude. We were traveling. The dogs were barking. You see that some of these sentences have continuous verbs. Am going, is waiting, is raining, are playing, was running, were traveling, were barking. These are in the present or past continuous tenses, but the form of the verb be, am, is, are, was, and were, is what changes depending on the subject. If you memorize the simple rules in this table, you'll find that using the verb be correctly is really no trouble at all. All right, if you're ready, it's now time for our quiz. All right, you see that I have a few tables over on that side that show you all the rules for subject verb agreement that we uh, have discussed. The first table is for verbs in general. And the second two tables are for the verb be, first for present and then for the past tense. Now, I have a total of 17 sentences for us to practice with. We'll do a set of five first and then we'll move on to the next set. All right, in each sentence, I want you to choose the correct verb form. So in each one, you see that there are two options at various places. I want you to choose the correct option in each case. Stop the video now. Think about your answers, then play the video again and continue. All right, here are the answers. Number one, I like to study for an hour before I go to bed at night. In both cases, we use the base form of the verb without an S because for the pronouns I, you, we, and they, we don't add S to the verb. It's the same in number two. You smell great. Uh, not smells, because we don't add S with the pronoun you. And here, what perfume are you wearing? Now, the subject here is not perfume. The subject is you. Okay, so uh, with you, the verb form uh, of be that we're supposed to use is are. So, what perfume are you wearing? Number three, this apple looks fresh. There's only one apple we're talking about here, so we add S to the verb. That's the singular form. This apple looks fresh, but those mangoes don't. Those mangoes are a plural. So uh, we don't add S to the helping verb do. Those mangoes don't. That means they don't look fresh. Number four, Paul and his brother run a successful photography business together. Remember that Paul and his brother is a compound subject. Paul and his brother are two people. So we use a plural verb form, run, without adding S to the end. And finally, number five, there are seven continents in the world. Here, the subject is not there. It's neither singular nor plural. There is just an adverb. 
The subject here is seven continents. That's a plural. So there are seven continents in the world. All right, here's the next set of five, number six to 10. Stop the video, think about your answers, then play the video and check. All right, here are the answers. In number six, we have a conversation between two people. What time is it? It's two o'clock. Why do you ask? Well, Jen has a flight at five. She needs to get going. Here we've said has and needs because in both cases we have a singular subject. Here Jen is a singular subject and she is a pronoun that refers back to Jen. Number seven, Sunil, again singular, says he would like to visit Moscow someday. Now you might be wondering, if Sunil is singular, why is it like and not likes over here? That's because when we have a modal verb like um, will, would, can, could, shall, should, and so on, we don't apply any subject verb agreement rules. We just put the modal and then the base form of the verb. That's why Sunil says he would like to visit Moscow someday. Number eight, you talk too fast for me. Could you slow down a little, please? Number nine, does Brenda drive to work? Again, Brenda is a singular noun, so we need to add S to the helping verb do. So we make it does, and then we may make a question with that. Does Brenda drive to work? No, she doesn't. She takes the bus. Number 10, we wanted to go out and play because we were really bored. With the uh, plural pronoun we, we use were in the past tense. So we were really bored, but it was raining outside, so we just stayed inside. It is a singular subject, so it was raining outside. Okay, now we move on to uh, sentences number 11 to 14. Okay, stop the video, do the exercise, and then check. Okay, in number 11, do all adverbs end in ly? Imagine a student asking that to his or her teacher. We say do because the subject here is all adverbs, plural. So do all adverbs end in ly? The teacher says, no, there are many adverbs that have other endings. So again, are and have because the subject is a plural. Number 12, my son, singular, my son goes to the gym every day after school. I'm glad he doesn't spend a lot of time playing video games like other kids. 13. Ashley, singular again. Ashley was elated. Elated means she was very happy. Ashley was elated when she found out her mom and dad were coming to visit. Mom and dad are two people. Again, we have a compound subject. Mom and dad were coming to visit. Okay, number 14, who are those people? I don't know. They look like executives or salespeople. I can't tell. All right, we move on to our last set of sentences, sentences number 15 to 17. These are slightly longer to challenge you. Uh, go ahead and stop the video and uh, do the exercise. Okay, number 15, what breed is your dog? He's a German Shepherd. What does he like to do? He loves going for walks, but he absolutely hates taking a bath. 16. Shalini teaches physics at a college. She enjoys teaching, but says... Now, up until this point, we've been dealing with Shalini, who is, a, uh, who is one person, so a singular subject. But here it gets a little complicated. But she says, the hours, plural, the hours are long. And the pay, singular, isn't very good. So she, singular again, is looking for a better paying job. Number 17, the report has revealed, the report is singular, the report has revealed that more than 2 million accounts, plural, have been affected because of the website's recently exposed security loophole. Now this last sentence, uh, you see, 2 million accounts have been affected. This is in the passive voice. 
Now, as far as subject-verb agreement goes, it doesn't matter whether a sentence is in the active voice or the passive voice. You just look at the subject and you apply the correct verb form. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Go ahead and watch part two of subject-verb agreement for more advanced topics. Let me know how many of these 17 sentences from the quiz you got right in the comments section below. As always, happy learning, and I'll see you in another lesson soon.